This is the Spiritual Truths Podcast Ministry, a healing, deliverance, and reconciliation ministry with your host, Pastor Tony Cooperwood. Let spiritual truths open your eyes and lead you from darkness to light and the power of Satan unto God that you may be forgiven of your sins and inherit eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now grab your Bibles, pen and paper, and prepare your hearts to listen while Pastor Tony Cooperwood expounds on the spiritual truths from the Word of God, emphasizing the power of the word to deliver and change circumstances. The Spiritual Truths Podcast. Changing lives and restoring hope. The Spiritual Truths Podcast. Hello, my friends. Thanks for tuning in to the Spiritual Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Pastor Tony Kibblewood. And on this podcast, I can promise you one thing. I'm going to tell you the truth and not the but the truth. So help me, God. I'm going to give you the word of God as it is written so that you might decide what is right. My brother and sister, we need to know the word of God. The word of God is the truth. The word of God is sure. And we need to apply his word to our lives. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Then the Father, we come together in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you will reveal truth to us today that we might apply to our lives and that we might become better as a result of it. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives and what you have already done. But most importantly, Father, we thank you for saving us. We can call you our Father because we are saved. We have placed our trust and faith in Jesus. And we were able to place our trust and faith in Jesus because you called us. You chose us as your own. And so, Father, we take every opportunity to bless your holy name, to magnify you for who you are, and to thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your kindness toward us. We bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we're going to be talking about your real enemy. Your real enemy. Your real enemy is not your neighbor. It's not the Republican or Democratic Democratic Party. It's not your boss. It's not your ex. Your real enemy is the devil. And it's a good bet that the devil is working in your life even as we speak. That problem, that situation that has you down at this very moment is because the devil is at work. He's trying to destroy you, my brother and sister. He's trying to steal your joy. And sometimes the enemy uses even our family members to get after us. The war is continuous. The war is ongoing. It's 24-7. And we need to understand that. We need to understand that there is no rest because the devil never rests. Our rest, our strength, our faith is found in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. We cannot have the victory outside of Jesus. And so if you want to win, if you want to defeat your enemy, you have to rely on the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one who gives us the victory. Call on his name. If we call on the name of Jesus, we'll find the help we need in time of trouble. For there is power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is able to overcome any and all situations and circumstances. But before we get to the enemy, let's look at who we are as individuals. We are human beings, and as human beings, we have a sin nature. And so sometimes we live according to our sinful nature, and our sinful nature opens the door for the enemy to have his way in our lives. When we sin, we align ourselves with the devil, and we turn our backs on the things of God and God himself. And so you might be saved today. You might have given your life to Jesus in the past, and you might be born again, but you are living a sinful lifestyle. And because you're living a sinful lifestyle, you are seeing your life fall apart all around you because you have given the devil access to your life and he is destroying you. He hates you, my brother and sister. He came to you as an angel of light He's convinced you that that in listening to him, you will have good things. But now you see he lied to you. The devil 
is your enemy. Satan is your enemy, my brother and sister. He does not like you. He does not like God. He hates you and he hates God. And he's using your sinful nature to destroy you. You have to turn away from your sins and place your complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins and you need to call on God in your time of need. Your sinful nature is this, my brother and sister. Your sinful nature is the things that you enjoy doing in your naturalness. And in your naturalness, you are at war with the Spirit of God. You are at war with God. If you have your Bibles handy, turn with me to the book of Galatians. Chapter 5 is where we're going. I think we were there last time. Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to start reading at verse number 16. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and it reads, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are in no obligation to the law of Moses. Drop In verse number 19, this is what we come over for. It says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I'm saying your enemy is the devil. Satan is your enemy. and But at the same time, you have a sinful nature. And you we have a sin nature that we inherited from our foreparents, Adam and Eve. And Satan uses our sin nature against us. He entices us. And he gets us to disobey the will of God, to live in the flesh instead of in the spirit. And he uses our own sins to destroy us. You see, sin is of the devil. The devil is the author of sin. The devil is the author of anything that is evil and wicked in the world. And so the world system is a sinful system. The world system with all of the trappings of the world, the pleasures of this life, is a sinful system. It's a system that is in opposition to the kingdom of God. And when we operate in that world system, when we follow the dictates of Satan, we get away from God. And in getting away from God, we have no protection against the devil, and he destroys our lives. And if we never get saved in the process, if we are never saved before we die, we will die and go to hell. It is just that simple, my brother and sister. So any way you look at it, any way you look at it, any way you slice it, the devil, Satan, is our real enemy. He's your real enemy, my brother and sister. Hold on for a second and turn with me to the book of Ephesians, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to start reading at verse number 10. Paul says, A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm 
against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. That's what we're fighting against, my brothers and sisters. Our real enemy is the devil. Last time we was talking about culture wars and all the things that that entails. But really and truly, behind the culture wars, at the top of the culture wars, is are demons, rulers of the evil in this world. Spiritual wicked demons that are working against us. Paul says that they are enemies, evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. They are mighty powers in this dark world, and they are evil spirits in heavenly places. Anything that brings division, anything that brings evil into the world, anything that is against God is of the devil, my brothers and sisters. And so when you have quarrels and division and anger and dissensions and uh, wild parties and orgies and all of those things, you are not of God. You are of the devil. You might say you're having a good time. You might say that is pleasure that you deserve. But really and truly, you are deceived. And you are allowing the devil to have his way in your life. Your enemy is not a human being, not a flesh and blood human being. Your enemy is of the devil. He is able to entice us. He is able to ensnare us and trap us. And he is able to destroy our lives because We give ourselves over to him when we commit sins because sins are against the will of God. We lose our protection when we engage in things that God forbids. And so you might find yourself today in a situation that you never dreamed of being in. It's a bad situation. It's a terrible situation, and you don't know how you got there. You probably got there because you disobeyed God, because you chose your own way, because you allowed the devil to deceive you, and you thought you could sin and get away with it. Any sin is of the devil, and the devil has only one purpose, and his one purpose is to destroy you. Jesus says in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You can't have life as God will have you to have it by living in sin, by living according to the dictates of your sin nature. God wants you to turn away from your sins. He wants you to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And so the devil might be on your back. The devil might be all in your life and destroying you at this very moment. But you can take authority over him. You can take authority over your real enemy by calling on the name of the Lord. All you have to do is repent and acknowledge that you have sinned. And ask Jesus to come and help you and to save you. And Jesus will. So if you find yourself in a bad situation, if you find yourself wrestling against what you thought was flesh and blood, but it's not flesh and blood. It is the spiritual evil behind the person who the enemy is using to attack you. You have to speak to the spirits and not to the person. You have to take a authority over the spirit that's 
controlling the people who you thought were your enemies. Now you know that they are not. Now that you know that you're dealing with powers of darkness that are working against you, now you know what you need to do. Paul says in verse 13, Ephesians 6, verse 13, Therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground. Put it on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your heaven and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Paul said you have to take on the full armor of God. You have to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. And in order to take on that full armor of God, you must first return back to God. You must repent of your sin. And you must acknowledge that you have strayed away and that you have opened doors that you never expected that would be open in your life. You have allowed the devil into your life and you've given him free reign in your life by sinning and turning your back away from the commandments of God. Now you have to repent. Now you have to close the door. Now you need to denounce Satan and you need to call on the name of the Lord. For the Bible says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You need to call on Jesus and Jesus will fight your battle for you. The battle is not yours. It is the Lord. But you must do your part. You must take on the full armor of God. You must stand on the truth of God. You must give or recommit yourself to God. And you must ask for help. You must stop sinning and you must place your complete total trust in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. Now turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and we will start reading at verse number 6. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse number 6. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. And be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Peter says, you had to stand firm, my brother. You had to believe in Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. You had to cast all your cares on God for he cares for you. In other words, You had to put your total, complete trust and faith in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. Your real enemy is not flesh and blood. It is not a human being. Your real enemy is the devil. And Peter says he walks about as a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And he has zoomed in on you, but you can defeat him. All you have to do and all you need to do is turn to Jesus. But you first must turn away from your sins. You should never expect God to help you in your sin. You need to repent of your sins. And you need to turn in faith to Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Place your faith in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. Then you will have all of heaven to help you to fight your battles. 
For the battle is not yours, my brother and sister. The battle is the Lord's. The Lord has already won your battle. It's already done. You just don't know it yet. Whatever you're going through now has already been decided. And I have good news for you. You have already won. For victory is in Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved you so much that he gave you Jesus, and you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But in time, you turned away from him, and you embraced sin, and now you are suffering the consequences of your sin. But I have good news. The good news is that once you're saved, you're always saved. Yes, we might stray away from God. We might go awry. We might go astray for a moment there. But all we have to do is to return back to him. And he will be there to accept us home. God will never leave us nor forsake us. He will never turn us away. He's waiting for you right now, my brother and sister. God is there waiting on you. All you need to do is turn to him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I've gone astray. I've turned away from you. I've lost my first love. But even now, I know you're waiting on me. And so I return. I turn away from my sins. I repent of my sins and I confess that they were wrong. And I was wrong in turning away from you. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me. I acknowledge my sins. I acknowledge my wrong. And I will not do them again. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Cleanse me. Change me, strengthen me, and bless me anew. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need your help. I need you to dis- defeat my enemy. I need you to destroy all the works of the enemy that are in my life at this very moment. Destroy those works, Lord Jesus, and build my life anew. I bless you, Lord Jesus. I thank you and I praise you. It is in your precious name I pray. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, Jesus has heard you and help is on the way. Just wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer and wait on the Lord and he will lift you up. We'll stop there for the day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to tell your family and friends about the Spiritual Truth Podcast. And if the Lord leads you, send us a donation so we can get this gospel out around the world. The world needs to hear about Jesus. The world needs to hear the truth. And we are here to deliver the truth. But we will tell the truth. So help us, God. We thank you for listening to the Spiritual Truth Podcast. We thank you for giving We thank you for all you do and continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for us and continue to share the good news of Jesus with those that you know. Until the next time, my friend, may the Lord watch between us while we are absent from one another until we come together again.
Thanks for listening to A Spiritual Truths Podcast, a ministry of Spiritual Truths Evangelical Ministries. Visit our website blog at spiritualtruthspodcast.org or you can mail all donations and correspondence to The Spiritual Truths Podcast, P.O. Box 831-472, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30083. You can give in support of this ministry at our website blog at spiritualtruthspodcast.org and at Tidely at Spiritual Truths Podcast. That's T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y at Spiritual Truths Podcast. And you can also give on Cash App at dollar sign Spiritual Truths Pod and on PayPal at Spiritual Truths Evangelical Ministries. Contact us on Facebook and Instagram at Spiritual Truths Pod. Email us at Spiritual Truths Pod at gmail.com. That's Spiritual Truths Pod at gmail.com. You can also reach Pastor Tony Cooperwood at area code 404-551-7339. Thanks again for listening to the Spiritual Truths Podcast, and please tune in again and tell your family and friends. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. And remember, all flesh is grass, and the grass withers, and the flowers thereof fade away, but the Word of God abides forever. This is the Word we preach. Tune in next time for another insightful episode of the Spiritual Truths Podcast. And please give to help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. Your tax-deductible support of this ministry is greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance. Your journey starts here. God bless you and yours. The Spiritual Truths Podcast Changing lives and restoring hope The Spiritual Truths Podcast